Good morning. I'm so glad to be here again today as we get into the Word of God. Thank you for joining me. I hope this time is a blessing. Let's uh, let's get into the Word this morning. Let's start with opening in a word of prayer, all right? Uh, Father, we just praise you and thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your Word. And Lord, we just pray this morning you'll open it up to us as we spend time with you. We pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. We're going to get started today. We're, now, we're in Matthew, right? And so... Uh, recap, if you didn't watch last week's videos, we started the book of Matthew last week, and today we're, we're in Matthew 5, but um, Matthew has been showing Jesus as the king of the Jews, right, as, their, as, their, as the son of David, right, you know, the, the, the chosen king who will reign forever, um, as promised to them in the Old Testament, um, and that's how it's been portrayed, and we've seen his lineage, we've seen his birth, we've seen... Um, um, his uh, his baptism uh, in chapter three, right where he, where he comes to John the Baptist. What a glorious, awesome picture that was, right? As as he comes out of the water, the son of the son of God comes out of the water, and the heavens open up, and the Holy Spirit descends like a dove onto Jesus, and and God the Father speaks down, "This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased." And of course, then Satan attacks, right? As Jesus is is uh, fasting in the wilderness, the you know for forty days, and. And Satan attacks, and Jesus brings the word of God into it, and 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 you know, and then and then he comes down from the mountain, and he begins his ministry, right? And he goes out there, and he he calls, you know, um, um, you know, Peter and his brother, and he calls James and John, and and then he says he begins his ministry, and he starts ministering to people, um, in chapter four, and uh, um, it's in that context that we get to chapter five. Really, five, six, and seven. We call it the Sermon on the Mount, and um, that's where we're at right now. So we're going to read. I'm not reading the entire Sermon on the Mount today. We're going to take it part, piece by piece, um, and so we're only going to read three verses today. Um, so let's read that. It says in uh, ch chapter five, verse one: Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And he'll keep going from there, but again, the, the picture here, remember, he's in Galilee, and he's ministering, right? He's healing the sick and taking care of the people, and as then I'm preaching, right? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and, and great crowds are gathering around him. It says all of Galilee and Decapolis and, and the area around Jordan and Jerusalem and and all these people are flocking to this to this uh, this prophet Jesus, who's who's doing all kinds of miracles and and preaching the the word, and um, and they gather around there, and the crowd gets so large, right? And Jesus looks out and sees this huge crowd, and he he goes up on top of the mountain, right, on top of the hill there, and he and he gets up there to teach, and he sits down, and and sitting down is this this mark of I'm about ready to teach you. Matter of fact, um, it, it, that was the tradition back then. You wanted to preach to someone you stood, but when you were teaching, you sat. Um, that's why, like in universities, they have, um, you know, the chair of each department, right? Uh, the chair of, you know, whatever department it is, because the, the chair is the is the person, is that, that top seat who, who then teaches. Um, it's amazing how these little traditions creep into our, our vernacular and our everyday lives, Um and you can still see him back here, in, you know, in the traditions then. But Jesus sat down to teach, and you know, and, and man, this is this is his. Uh, I mean, this is like Jesus' manifesto right here. This is this is him teaching about the kingdom of heaven, uh, really his kingdom, and, and what his earthly kingdom will look like, uh, I believe. And um, he starts off his very first thing he says. He says, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven." And that's how he starts the entire thing. And remember, the, the people he's been ministering to, the downtrodden of society, right? And so that's who's all around him. I can imagine them, you know, feeling, wow, you know, he's speaking to me right now. You know, blessed are the poor. And these people who are just, these hurting people already. But man, what a what a picture. He says, blessed are the poor. And, and that, that word poor, the, the, it's translated in our Bible, at least my Bible, is, as poor. The word means it's not just doesn't it just doesn't just mean poor like you know not wealthy and poor it means in abject poverty having to beg to 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 survive 
you know, relying on the assistance of others to, to be able to survive everyday life. And that's what he's talking about. Blessed are the poor in spirit. So not just those who don't have money, but he says he's saying the poor in spirit. And then I'll tell you what, that's, that's the people that know they're dependent. They, they know where they're at in their life. They're not just poor, but they know it. But they know it. And, and that's the situation. That's the people he's talking to. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And man, I'll tell you what. That resonates. As I thought about that, man, I, I think so many times in my life, um, I don't always understand how how much um, how much poverty my spiritual life really is. How how dependent upon God I truly am. And, and those, this is what he's saying. That's the very first step in in this kingdom. Here is you got, we got to understand how truly in need of God we are. I think of uh, I think of Isaiah the prophet. Man, Isaiah the prophet, you know, it's really interesting. Um, in the beginning of his book, he's preaching, right? And he's, um, I'll just look here in chapter 5 as I'm, as I'm here. And I'm just looking at my page here, right? And it says, he says, woe to those. Uh, my, my, my section of the Bible is titled, woe to the wicked, as he's preaching. And it's woe to those in verse 8. And then, again, woe to those in 11. And, and um, oh, going down the list is more. Woe to uh, those in 18 and in 19 and in 20 and 21, 22. As he's preaching, woe to those who are wicked. And then the very next chapter, he says here, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robes filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, and each had six wings. And he goes on to describe the seraphim a little bit. And they, and they said to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations, verse 4, the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, and Isaiah says, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Guys, and that's that's the exact situation we're in. And that's those are the people he's talking about here in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Those who can look at their life and say, Woe is me, for I am unclean, for I am a sinner. Man, for